Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Steven here, and today is all about indulging in some of Japan's most incredible food experiences. We're wrapping up our Kyoto journey with a deep dive into the famous Nishiki Market. Think rows upon rows of tantalizing street food, and yes, I'll be trying out some of the best eats right here with you. Afterwards, we will be heading off to Osaka, known for its modern architecture, nightlife, and hearty street food. We begin our adventures by checking out at the Hausa Kyoto Gojo Karasuma and leaving our luggage behind. We then decided to try Tully's Coffee, which is a pretty popular coffee chain in Japan. Apparently, this coffee chain was pretty big in America before the American chain permanently closed in September 2018. It now has overseas licensing agreements in Japan owned by some Japanese beverage company. You keep saying Tully's Coffee and now we're having it. Oh yeah, because we keep seeing it in the meetings. You know, while I'm always excited to try local favorites, I've got to say, there's a special place in my heart for Starbucks. Maybe it's the familiar taste or the way they get the milk just right, but it's my go-to comfort drink, especially when I'm back home in Canada. During our walk to Nishiki Market, we stumble upon some beautiful scenes of Kyoto. Just look at how beautiful Kyoto is. Oh, there's duckies or whatever those, those are. Those are ducks. They're mallard ducks. Oh, I don't know. I'm not no. a I'm not a biologist. Because you must be a biologist to know what duck is. <laughs> this city never ceases to amaze me with its blend of tradition and modernity. Just look around. There's a sense of peace here that's hard to find anywhere else. Every corner, every alley has its own story, and the serene beauty of Kyoto. Oh, it's in use! Yeah, now oh, it's in yeah. use, yeah. Place at the cream, and then it goes around in a circle to bake the underside, and then it flips it, and then bakes the underside on that side, and then flips it and has it here. $11, entrance fee, plus $11. 17 bucks. And here we are, the Micro Pig Cafe. Let's go inside and meet some of these cute little pigs. So no one had to pick up micro pigs. The only thing you can bring is the store your phone and camera. After you sign the waiver, you have to put your shoes and bags in the locker provided. They only allow your phone and camera. Okay, so we just let them come to us and get yeah. drinks. Look at these little guys. They're so friendly and curious. It's amazing how well they interact with people. This is such a unique experience. The cafe has created a really warm and comfortable environment for both the pigs and the visitors. You can see how well cared for these animals are and they're just so adorable. You get unlimited drinks during your visit since you are charged for the time spent in the cafe and not the drinks. However, because the pigs are on your lap while you're petting them, it is hard to grab drinks from the vending machine at the same time. You can ask the staff to help you but I think these cafes are not primarily for enjoying drinks. If you're ever in Kyoto and looking for a unique and heartwarming experience, the Micro Pig Cafe in Shinkyogoku is a pretty good way to spend your time. It's a great way to relax and enjoy some adorable company. However, for the price of the cafe, I think you shouldn't expect much for the quality of the drinks. All right, let's say goodbye to these little friends and head on to our next adventure. Okay, this is different. This is very different. <laughs> like this is Nishiki. Welcome to Nishiki Market. This place is often called Kyoto's Kitchen and for a good reason. Every step here is a new taste, a new aroma. Let's explore what makes this market a food lover's paradise. Kyoto on a stick and on a stick. Everything's on a stick. Our goal is to be honest with our viewers. So we will tell you what our experience is. We do not take sponsors from restaurants and YouTube is not our source of income. When you come to Nishiki Market, you'll notice that a lot of the shops here sell food on a stick. The prices are quite expensive for the most part, but we think it is because a lot of tourists come here. This one is good. That one's really good. The green onion, octopus, tempura. Okay. 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 Give it a try and see. Mmm, it is good. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, really good. Mmm, really good. tender. Like, it's kind of on the saltier side. But it's like, you know, you can taste the fish. It's supposed to be octopus. It's very, it's kind of octopusy, kind of doughy. Mm. Nishiki Market stretches over five blocks and it's lined with more than a hundred shops and stalls. Each of these offers something unique. 
from fresh seafood to exotic spices and even Kyoto's famous pickles. Sweeping powder. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. It's not sticky. Mm -hmm. I like this texture more actually. It's like monic jello. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what I like. That's what Mikey Chen has. Mikey Chen has too. I think he said the tangerine is very good. This has very juicy. Okay, let's like, put that to the test to yes, see if it's true. We have to. We stumble across this mochi store and remembered that a YouTuber, Mike Chen, recommended to try the tangerine mochi. We want to do a comparison ourselves. Is it as good as he say? Juicy? Mmm. Very juicy. Mmm. It just tastes like an orange wrapped in mochi. Yeah, it just tastes like a tangerine with mochi, basically. It is very juicy. Very juicy for sure. Everything's a tourist trap. Yeah. <laughs> but like it's but that, like... Uh, the it, tourist it's trap like, is more... Uh, is a better deal than the tourist yeah. trap. The great thing about Nishiki Market is not just the food, but the stories behind them. Many of these stalls have been here for generations, and they take great pride in their craft. However, we find that it is becoming more of a tourist trap, especially for the prices they're charging compared with the food they're getting. I think it's... Yeah. Check this out folks, we've stumbled upon something really fascinating here in Nishiki Market. It's called a raindrop cake. Made from natural water and agar, this delicate dessert is said to be like eating a drop of rain and it's only 600 yen. Let's give it a try. This is really something. It's like a shimmering jewel and it actually comes in this balloon. I've been told you have to gently break it open with a toothpick. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. Oh, and then it comes out like that. Oh my god. Well, that didn't go as planned. It looks like I poked it a bit too hard. But no worries, let's still taste it. Okay, here goes. The texture is like jello, but wow. The taste is surprisingly good. The soybean flour adds a nice nuttiness, and the dark honey brings a rich sweetness. The cake itself is subtly flavored, almost like a mild, sweet water. It's more about the texture, which, despite my mishap, is still really interesting. Kind of a jelly-like feel. Think of it like eating agar with powdery flour on top mixed with sticky honey. It is sweet and nutty, but I think it is nothing that special. Look what we found! A stall that's claiming their crab sticks are tastier than crab and made with high-quality advanced technology, and for 400 yen, it sounds like a culinary challenge we've got to take on. This is quite the show. They're grilling and torching these crab sticks right in front of us. And that special soy sauce, it's apparently a secret recipe. I'm really curious now. Is that actually tasty? Do you think it's a lie? It's just a grocery store imitation crab. It tastes exactly like imitation crab. There's a little bit of a charcoal taste to it though. I do like imitation crab better than real crab though. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just tastier than crab. But... It's imitation crab. Yeah. Honestly, I like imitation crab better than real, than real crab mm -hmm. because imitation crab has, is juicier. It also doesn't have like that dry flaky texture. Yeah, that's true. And that, my friends, was Nishiki Market, an absolute gem in the heart of Kyoto. From raindrop cakes that taste like sweet rain to crab sticks with a smoky twist, this place has it all. If you ever find yourself in Kyoto, make sure to set aside a few hours for Nishiki Market. It's a place where every bite tells a story, where tradition meets innovation, and where your taste buds are sure to embark on an unforgettable adventure. However, be aware of the prices here. A lot of the things you buy here are expensive and could be labeled as tourist traps. A tip to save money is to try a few snacks at Nishiki Market but don't fill yourselves up or it can get very expensive and you might not get full. Then exit Nishiki Market and eat at the McDonald's right outside the market. The Japanese specialties at McDonald's is very decent. This drink is the best tea. You know what, 88 cents isn't bad though. Yeah, best tea though. Yeah. It's time to say goodbye to the enchanting city of Kyoto. We've explored ancient temples, wandered through scenic streets and tasted some amazing food at Nishiki Market. But now it's time to head to our next destination, the vibrant and exciting city of Osaka. Do you feel the same way about Kyoto? No, not really. More for Tokyo, right? Than one night. You know why though? Mm. We stay longer. We stay longer and the type of place we stayed at was like our home. 
Yeah, it was kind of like memorable. We're on our way to the train to Osaka and we're really excited about this. It's just a short ride away, but the change in scenery and vibe is something we're really looking forward to sharing with you. The train system in Japan is incredibly efficient and a great way to travel between cities. Plus, it gives you a chance to see the countryside zoom by, which is a nice contrast to the cityscapes we've been exploring. Beautiful Osaka, eh? <laughs> We planned our entire routes following the directions of Google Maps. If you have a hard time finding directions from Google Maps, a good idea is to ask for directions. A lot of Japanese people speak English. At the same time, we're so convenient though. Our Airbnb in Osaka is located within a 5 minute walking distance from Kuromon Market, which is super convenient. Ooh, look. Oh my god, they gave us a bag of sweet. Look. Huh? There's a little couchy couchy. I know. I actually like this place. Uh, okay, fine. I like it better than Kyoto. And then Kuruma Market's there. That's about zero minutes. Boner coffee, Boner coffee is downstairs. Boner coffee. Yeah, okay, it's like right downstairs. Welcome to the famous Kuruman Market. Kuruman Market has been around for over 190 years and it's the go-to place for fresh, high-quality ingredients. From exotic seafood to fresh fruits and local specialties, there's something here for every palate. Let's see what delicious finds we can discover here. Ooh, I would love that. It's on sale. And it's five dollars, but that much. Oh, that's really heavy. Oh my god, I think like this, like life cannot get better than this. Oh, oh my nice. god, no way. So much food. Just look at the prices at this grocery store. If you want to spend less money on vacation, a good tip is to buy food at a grocery store and eat it at home in your Airbnb. 20% off? Yeah. Ooh. If your Airbnb has a stove and a fridge, you can save a lot of money. Japan can be very cheap too if you don't live or eat too luxurious Six. things. Oh, yeah. Six scallops for 980. You know what? We can make our own sushi. Oh, that'll be so fun too with wasabi and stuff. Yeah, look! Like $16 for that much. I can just and grab a the, spoon and eat it. They're the big ones. Yeah. Not like the tiny ones. You can literally buy all the ingredients here to make your own sushi at home. Oh my god, dessert too? Well, yes. half of it is mine. Yes. Okay, good. Of course. Thank you, because I had to use my pancreas to help you. Thank you, I appreciate you. We've got our wagyu, some delightful desserts, and fresh veggies. I think we're all set for a mini feast later on. But first, let's head back to the Airbnb to drop these off. With our groceries safely stashed away, it's time to experience the energy of Dodonbori. It's one of Osaka's most iconic neighborhoods, known for its bright neon lights, bustling streets, and of course, more amazing food. Let's go experience some of that famous Osaka night. Oh, I want the lights dropping. Mine are very sweet. Really sweet. This is the heart of Osaka's entertainment district, famous for its bright neon lights, dynamic atmosphere, and most importantly, its incredible street food. You can feel the energy pulsating through the streets. Let's dive into the Dotonbori experience. We're here at one of Osaka's famed kushikatsu restaurants. Kushikatsu, or deep fried skewered meat and vegetables, is a classic here. This place is known for being on the pricier side, but it's got a reputation for great food. Let's see how it lives up to that. First impressions The outer shell is perfectly crunchy just how you'd want a kushikatsu. It's golden, crispy, and really appealing visually. But here's where it gets interesting. The inside is a bit of a letdown. It seems overcooked, and unfortunately, it's quite dry. Not what I was expecting, especially at these prices. It's a contrast to the delicious looking exterior. It's so hot, I can burn it down. Oh. This quail egg. If you ever wondered what a quail egg would taste like if it turned into a tiny edible golf ball, this is it. The yolk is so overcooked that I can taste the sulfur. Mmm. The redeeming factor is this one scallop dish. It's like a symphony in my mouth. The outside is crispy, giving way to a burst of sweet oceanic flavors. This, my friends, is what dreams are made of. Mm. Oh, oyster! Ew! Mm. <laughs> you can buy oyster? I don't like cooked oyster. <laughs> So, this was an interesting experience. While the ambience and presentation here are top-notch, 
The core of what makes kushikatsu great seems to have been missed. Most of the dishes here are crunchy on the outside and overcooked inside. The only two dish that stood out were the scallop and squid, which has exceptional taste and a juicy interior. Well, that was an interesting dining experience. But Dotenbori's vibrant spirit doesn't end with just one meal. This place comes alive at night, and there's so much more to see and taste. Let's keep exploring. I'm not in the mood for gyoza today. Yeah, for me, I'm not in the mood for gyoza today. Yeah. Just listen to the street sounds of Dotenbori. It could be traditional dancing. It could also be... Yeah, religious dancing. The massive takoyaki symbol. And a big octopus. Oh my god, I feel like this is like sensory overload, stimulation. You can't come to Osaka and not indulge in takoyaki. And I've found a place that's said to have some of the best in the city. They've got a unique twist too. Takoyaki topped with a poached egg and green onion. And of course, we'll also try their standard takoyaki. Let's go see if it lives up to the hype. Either truffle salt, poached egg, Ooh, three kinds of Japanese flavors. Ew, salty plum. Three kinds of Western flavors. Pepperoncino, truffle set, cheese. Let us get the special gourmet series. Oh yeah, we should. Takoyaki is an art form here. Watching them being made is part of the experience. The batter poured into the molds, the precise flipping, and then the perfect garnishing. Just look at how beautiful this poached egg and green onion takoyaki is. The runny egg yolk looks savory and the mayo on top of the green onions is making our mouth water. Here goes the classic takoyaki, crispy on the outside, soft and gooey on the inside, with a chunk of tender octopus in each one. The flavor is incredible. It's a beautiful balance of savory, a hint of sweetness from the sauce, and a kick from the pickled ginger. Mm. Mm. Now for the special one, this looks amazing. The poached egg on top is a unique twist. Let's give it a try. Wow, this is a game changer. The creamy yolk adds a rich, smooth texture to the takoyaki, and the green onions bring a fresh, sharp contrast. It's a perfect combination. This takoyaki is not just food, it's a culinary experience. If you ever find yourself in Osaka, a visit to a takoyaki stall like this one is a must. It's not just about tasting one of Osaka's iconic dishes, it's about experiencing a piece of the local culture. This place with its traditional and innovative takes on takoyaki gets a huge thumbs up from me. The crab ice cream. So, we've just come across something totally out of the ordinary here in Osaka. A stall that sells crab ice cream. Yes, you heard that right? Crab ice cream. I know it sounds wild, but this is the kind of unique culinary adventure I just can't pass up. Oh my God. How is it? It does taste like crab. Is it good? Yeah. What do you think? Mm. Walking by the Dotenbori Canal is a must-do. The reflections of the neon lights on the water create a magical scene. It's the perfect place to walk off a meal and soak in the vibes of Osaka. Dotonbori never fails to amaze. Whether you're here for the food, the sights, or the entertainment, it's a place that truly captures the essence of Osaka. We'll spend the night eating other street foods before heading back to our Airbnb to cook the Wagyu we bought. Hi Ben? I don't move on. Yes. Okay. 700. It smells good in there. It does smell very good in there. I hope we it can make it better great though, but so. Mmm. Is it good? This is the chewy one. All right, everyone. After an amazing time exploring Dotonbori and trying some truly unique flavors, it's time to head back to our Airbnb. But the culinary adventure isn't over yet. Remember the Wagyu steak we picked up from the grocery store at Karoman Market? It's about time we turn that beautiful piece of meat into a delicious meal. Let's get cooking. This is wonderful. This is great actually. No, like, like Don Berry is one thing, but this thing is like another, it's another just level. So wholesome. It's so wholesome, yeah. Here we are, back at our little home away from home in Osaka. Cooking while traveling is always an exciting challenge. And when you're cooking Wagyu, you know it's going to be special. Let's do this justice. The key to a perfect Wagyu steak is not to overdo it. 
You want it tender, juicy, and just bursting with flavor. And with meat this good, that's exactly what you'll get. When it comes to Wagyu, less is more. This meat is so rich and flavorful, you don't need much. Just some seasoning salt, a bit of pepper, and the right amount of heat. Oh my god, it's so oily, this steak. It's like, you have no idea, like, the moment you touch it, it's like oil. Like, well, on yeah. your hand. You don't have to add oil to it. Yeah, no oil needed. Ooh, it's oh. so soft. You're cutting it with a butter knife. <laughs> Maybe it's not too undercooked. Oh, shit, no. Like, that's... That's usually it. Yeah, that's how I like it. You like it like that? This is also how they usually how you usually see it in the pictures. Yeah, usually that's how it is. This is incredible. The steak is so tender it practically melts in your mouth. Just look at us cut it with a butter knife. The flavor is rich, buttery, and just out of this world. Cooking your own meal, especially with ingredients like this, makes the experience even more rewarding. What do you think so far? It's delicious. Oh my, oh my god. god. It's even better than the Wagyu beef we have, the Kobe beef, mm -hmm. in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. You want to try some of the fat? You try some of the fat. I don't want to. Just a small piece. Small piece. Don't like it. I love it. You still love it, right? Even with the fat. No, the thing is, it doesn't taste like fat. Yeah, I know, right? Even though it's just fat. It's just fat, yeah. but it's, there's like meat flavor so yeah. much, so it doesn't taste like fat. Yeah, you're right. Mm. Cooking this Wagyu steak was the perfect way to end our day in Osaka. It's these moments, these flavors, that turn a trip into an unforgettable journey. Thanks for joining me today. And remember, whether you're out exploring or making your own meal, every bite tells a story. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your own culinary adventures. Until next time, keep savoring and exploring.